fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, outlaws roamed the new territory. The local sheriffs were powerless against them. They robbed and plundered almost at will, until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice. It was only through his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, that law and order were finally established on the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come along, Silver! We're heading for Littlefield! Someone's waiting on the trail ahead! Hi, oh, Silver! Away! Sheriff Bart Sanders and Deputy Greg Morton had ridden to Ten Strike Junction to pick up the outlaws, Tex Seeley and Vern Keller. The route they chose took them through the Lost Hope Desert. One night they camped at the only water hole in the entire Lost Hope Territory. While the sheriff and deputy saddled up their horses, their two prisoners whispered together. Hurry it up, Vern. I am. As best I can. We ain't got much slack to work with. If we don't get loose this time, it's about our last chance. Just hold still, Tex. I think this knot's almost ready to give. Get me loose and I'll untie you. Yeah. Careful. The sheriff just looked this way. I'm watching him. It won't be but a couple of minutes and they'll be ready to start. Blast it. Can't you shut up and let me work? It's this way a little closer. There. There, that better? Yeah. One second now. Yeah. That done it. Good. All right. Now you hold still. I can't turn your way or they'd suspicion something. I'll have to keep my hands behind my back. You don't waste no time. It'll go faster with my hands free. All you had to work with was your fingers. Mm-hmm. It's lucky we're in the desert. If they hadn't been so sure we wouldn't try running away, they'd have tied our feet, too. <laughs> yeah. The sheriff just buckled his cinch strap. He'll be coming this way. Yeah. I'm getting it. Hurry. Here he comes. There. There you are. Now keep your hands behind your back like they were still tied till I give the word. Mm-hmm. Fill the canteens, Greg, and we'll be on our way. What are you coyotes whispering about? Nothing. <laughs> Thought I didn't notice nothing, didn't you? Well, it'll be a long, cold day afore two cheap crooks like you put anything over on me. Sure, Sheriff. We know there ain't no use trying. Get up. Get on your feet. I'll have a look at them ropes. <laughs> you most likely loosened them some during the night trying to get free. You'll pay for all this, Sheriff. I won't fret about it. Now get up like I said. Yeah, you'll have to give me a hand if you want me to get up. How do you expect a fellow to sit without getting all cramped when you tie him up like a calf for Brandon? All right. Up with you. Yeah. 
Thanks, Sheriff. Now make a move and I'll let daylight through you. What? Get your own gun again, your side, Sheriff. And I'm willing to use it. Come on, Vern, stand up. Uh, the deputy. I'll take care of him. Here he comes with the canteen, Sheriff. You warn him off and you wish you had the Careful. Careful. The blazer's with you. Greg, watch out. They got untied and grabbed my gun. Watch Go out. for your shooting iron, Greg, and I'll drill the sheriff. Get him, Greg. Don't pay no attention to what they say. Go well, on, the sheriff's dead. Bastard Greg, he's just bluffing. Bluffing? You know it as well as I do. Ain't they always boasted they were too smart to be killers? Now draw. <laughs> You're too late. I got you both covered. Take the deputy's gun, Vern. Sure. You low down. Yeah. This shooting iron's liable to come in right handy. I still say you wouldn't have shot to kill. Of course I wouldn't. I ain't leaving myself open to no hanging charge. But that don't mean I won't let you have lead or will do the most good if you try anything. Vern, get the horses and bring them here. Right away. What are you poor cats going to do? I'm going to show you that you wasn't so slick as you thought you was. But I told everybody you was taking us back to White Rapids by way of the pass, didn't you? Then you changed your mind and cut across the desert. So that our parts couldn't lay for you and take us away. Well, what of it? <laughs> Why, just this. Nobody knows you came this way. So nobody will think to look in the desert for you for quite a spell. Meaning? Meaning that me and Vern never kill. But if we leave you here afoot with food enough for only a couple of days... Why, then I wouldn't give a hoot for your chances to reach town alive. You rotten skunks. That's the same as murder. There ain't a horseman comes this way once in 90 days. Well, that ain't my fault, is it? Here's the horses, Tex. All four of them. That's just fine. Now help yourself to the deputy's badge, Vernon. I'll take the sheriff. Hey, wait! Don't forget you're covered. Well, Tex, what do we want their badges for? Because <laughs> they talk too much. Huh? They were so blame sure we was heading for jail... They didn't figure you'd do any harm to talk about the trip they was going to make to Littlefield after they was through with it. Littlefield? <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. I never thought of that. But you can't do it. You can't get away with it. No? I suppose I didn't hear you tell your deputy there that you wasn't known in Littlefield. But I tell and you... And if you ain't known, who's to say we ain't you? As long as we're wearing your badges and can show the papers you carry to identify yourself. Gosh, Sheriff, they could get away with it all right. Uh-huh. And that gold you fellas was going to get off the Littlefield stage to take to the bank at White Rapids, we'll take for ourselves. If I ever get out of this alive... But you won't, Sheriff. So there ain't no use talking about it. Well, I'll take your bed, Sheriff. There, thanks. Now you can hand over them papers. Hey. Quick! A bullet through the shoulder wouldn't make things no easier for you. You get the deputy's badge and papers, Vern. Yeah. You're worse than killers. You hear me? The papers. Mm. Here they are. Yeah, let me see. And these are the ones. Now we'd like you to side of bacon and some beans out of the saddlebags. <laughs> Don't eat them things up too fast. You ain't likely to get any more grub for quite a spell. There. I left the stuff in the ground for you to pick up when we're gone. All ready, Vern? I got everything the deputy had to show who he is. Let's get on our way. Sure. I reckon there ain't no use telling you pole cats again that this is the same as murder. You might as well save your breath. But I'll tell you this. Whether me and Greg live or not, the day will come when you'll pay for what you're doing. Just remember that. You'll pay as sure as I'm standing here. <laughs> we'll take the chance. Come on, Vern. Head across for Littlefield. We'll have to make at least one dry camp before we get out of this desert. So the faster we travel, the better. Grab a hold of the rein of the deputy's horse. He'll follow you, and I'll take the sheriff's. Right. And let's get going. Get up, eh? Get up, get along. Get up. Get up. Two days of swift travel carried the outlaws beyond the desert. After hiding the extra saddles, they turned their own horses loose and continued toward Littlefield with those belonging to Sheriff Sanders and his deputy. Burn. Yeah? Look across over there. You see them two riders? Never noticed them before. Hey, one of them's masked. And the other's a redskin. Outlaw. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, what's funny about it? It's awful hard for you to remember you're a deputy and I'm a sheriff, ain't it? Well, I don't... We could use a little cash if we get our hands on that gold, couldn't we? You mean you... Want... I mean that using our authority as officers of the law, we're going to stop them fellas. And after stopping them, we're going to help ourselves to any cash they might have handy. <laughs> Seeing as how they're crooks and we're lawmen, they ain't going to make no complaints about it afterward either. Come on, let's take after them. Get up, Ed. Get up, Ed. Come on. Get along, boy. Get along. Get up. Get up, Get up Hold on there! Up where you are! Oh, hold that. Don't, 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 don
Watch out for your guns. Move, 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 move. What do you want, Sheriff? Raise your hands. We are under arrest. That ain't neither here nor there. Raise your hands like I said. One moment. This is Littlefield County. Ben Lathrop is sheriff here. I don't know who you are or where you came from. But I do know you haven't any authority. Tell them who you are, Sheriff. I'm Sheriff Sanders from White Rapids. This is my deputy. Neither one of us has taken any lip from outlaws. So you follow orders pronto or take the consequences. What's the charge of your arresting us? There don't need to be any charge. And we ain't arresting you. We're just taking the cash you fellas most likely stole. You want our money? Maybe we can't jail you. But like I said, we can take what you stole. We're not outlaws. We have nothing that's been stolen. Don't argue with him, Sheriff. I ain't gonna. You fellas do like I say. It looks to me as though this time crooks are wearing badges. That's just enough. Is? At them, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Blast it, horses. Shoot him. Shoot him. No, you don't. Now watch out. Ah, they almost knocked me from the saddle. My gun was knocked out of my head. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Silver, away. We got a gun for drill him. We're my gun away, too. We can't stop him. Tonto, and those men represent the Lord White Rapids. We may be needed there. Not what Tonto thinks. We'll ride there and see just what's going on. Uh-huh. Come on, Silver. At White Rapids, the masked man remained in camp just outside town while Tonto entered to make inquiries. The things the faithful Indian learned sent him galloping swiftly to rejoin his friend. Oh, Scout, oh, oh, Scout. You look as though oh. you found out something, Tonto. Tonto, Tonto learned plenty. Yes? Fellow that wear badge, not lawmen. They weren't? Tonto talked with deputy in town. Tell deputy about fellow that wear badge. Deputy tell Tonto, them, outlaw. It seems strange to me that honest lawmen would act like that, even though I was masked. Tonto learned... Plenty more. What did you learn, Kimasabi? Sheriff and one deputy go after Outlaw. And now, Outlaw, wear badge. You mean the deputy you spoke to is afraid something's happened to the sheriff? Ah. Uh, Perhaps those outlaws killed the sheriff and the deputy with him. Not, not it. No? Them Outlaw never kill. Them named Tex Vern. Tex Seeley and Vern Keller. Were those the men? Not right. I've heard about them. I've heard they never kill. But what good would it do them to take those badges? Them get gold. Gold? Huh. Stage bring gold to Littlefield. Sheriff go there to get gold. Bring it back. Maybe outlaw now get gold. But they could never get away with that. Someone would know they weren't the real sheriff and deputy. Sheriff stranger there. Then it wouldn't be known they weren't lawmen. Huh. Did you tell the deputy you spoke to that we met Tex and Vern on the trail to Littlefield? Me? Me tell him. But him say stage, get there two, two days from now. Two days from now? Huh. No one from White Rapids could get there in time to expose those outlaws before they collected the gold. Huh. Unless we ride there. I think Silver and Scout can make the trip in two days. That's right. That means we have two things to do, Kimasabi. And um, what then? Keep Tex and Vern from stealing the gold. Oh. Make them tell what they've done with the sheriff. That not hard. The first won't be, but the second will. Why you say that? We don't know for sure. They haven't killed the sheriff and his deputy. If they have, they'd never tell. Because if the bodies were found, they could be hung. Oh. And if the sheriff and deputy are alive, Tex and Vern are likely clever enough to know they could use any information we want to bargain for their own release. Me here, feller named Tex. Plenty smart. But we'll find some way to get the information, Tonto. Here, Silver. Uh, we we ride heat fast. Steady, boy. Yep. We rest only when we have to. Ready? Uh, get him up, Scout. I'll Silver. Away! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned that the men they had met on the trail were outlaws, they raced toward Littlefield. Shortly after nightfall on the second day, the masked men and Tonto took advantage of the darkness and approached the stagecoach office on foot. Careful we're not seen, Tonto. Mm. There's a light in the office. The manager must be there. We'll make sure he's alone before we go inside. Here, window. Yes. Now wait till I look. Other fellows there? No. There's only one man inside. He's writing at a desk, so he must be the manager. Oh, we go in. I'll go alone, Tonto. You wait outside. If you see anyone heading for the office, warn me. Tonto, do that. I'll not be gone long. Come in. What the? Are you the manager of the stage line? A masked man. I asked you a question. Sure, I'm the manager, but I. A gun in that drawer, huh? Get your hand back. A hold up. This isn't a hold up. And what's the mask for? Why'd you draw on me? I wear the mask for reasons of my own. And I drew only because you were going to. But I'm Listen not... Listen to me. I think I can prove to you I'm not an outlaw. There's nothing here for you to steal if you are. But there soon will be. Huh? What do you know about I what's going to be I know there's a stage doing Littlefield in an hour. And I know that stage is carrying a large shipment of gold. So you are an outlaw. Well, you don't if need I to wanted come the gold, why would I come in here an hour before the gold arrived? I don't know, but I'm not... It would only be taking unnecessary risk. You must have had some reason. I came here to warn you against outlaws. What outlaws? Two men have been here sometime within the past three or four days. They've represented themselves as a sheriff and deputy from White Rapids. They're down to the cafe now. But they're not what they claim to be. What do you mean by that? One of them is a man by the name of Tex Seeley. The other is Vern Keller. You're a loco. The one Sheriff Sanders from White Rapids. The other's his deputy. You know Sheriff Sanders by sight? No, but I've seen his papers. His badge and those papers were stolen from the real sheriff. I don't believe it. I don't care what you believe. Given time, I can prove everything I've said. But in the meantime, the gold must not be turned over to those men. You're up to some scheme. I know doggone well you are. You just want me to keep that gold here so as you can get it. Even if I were an outlaw, you've been warned, haven't you? You can have Sheriff Lathrop from Littlefield here guarded, can't you? The sheriff's out of town, and you most likely know it. Then get other men. Get anybody. That's just what I'm going to do. Good. But I still say don't turn over that gold to those other men. I don't see why not. I've told you one reason. And it sounded mighty funny. And there's another reason. Yeah? The real Sheriff Sanders must be found. And he won't be unless you help. Uh. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain by holding on to that gold. Well, maybe I... Listen to the rest I have to say and decide for yourself. When the masked man had finished talking with Clay, the manager of the stage line, he rejoined Tonto and told the faithful Indian the result of his conversation. Almost an hour went by, and then Tex and Vern, still pretending to be Sheriff Sanders and his deputy, left the cafe and strolled toward the stagecoach office. <laughs> Vern, just a few minutes or so, and we'll have our hands on more gold than we've ever seen before. The stage is doing well. Uh-huh. We most always gets in a few minutes late. And yeah, there's Clay on the steps of the station. Howdy, Clay. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Deputy. We thought we'd be here when the stage got in. Then we wouldn't have to waste no time collecting the gold and starting for home. Uh-huh. Well, thanks. Sure. We didn't hanker much after covering for this gold, but uh, the bank back to home is mighty anxious for it. I reckon so, Sheriff. There's the stage. Get to open them up. Get about on time. Look at it come. Come on. Are you sure the gold will be aboard, Clay? It'll be there, all right. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Have a good trip, Jed. What's the news over to Painesville? Oh, there's any mail for me? Jed. Yeah, Clay? You get that box over to Painesville? It's right here. You'll have to give me a hand with it. That's the one we're looking for? Uh Uh-huh. I'll help you carry it in the office. Hand it down, Jed. Here she comes. Grab hold of the end of it. Let her go. I'll get the other end. Uh, There you are. Uh, I got it. Come on, Clay. Uh Uh-huh. Watch out for the steps, fellas. We'll make it. It's a gun heavy. Carry it into the desk, and then we can set it down. Yeah. Now, swing it up so it'll clear the edge, then put her down. Uh, That was plenty heavy. Gonna make quite a load for our saddlebags. Now close the door, Deputy. We don't want folks seeing what we got here. Sure. You'll help us load up, Clay? Well, just as soon as there's one more thing tended to. Yeah? You know that paper from the bank? Huh? What paper? <laughs> you don't mean to say you forgot. What are you talking about? Sheriff, you know as well as I do, I ain't to turn over this gold till you give me that paper I'm speaking of. Look here. Don't you believe I'm the sheriff? I haven't said you're not, have I? We showed you our identification and everything. What more do you want? There's something funny here. Yeah? I got word from the bank in your town that you two fellas would be here for this gold. 
But at the same time, I was told you'd have a letter from the bank to show me. Mm, they never told us that. Well, they must have forgot about well, then it. Then I'm sorry, but... You I mean guess... we don't get that gold till you get that letter? It'd be as much as my job is worth to do any different. Why, haven't we... Uh, just a second. Huh? Clay, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe there was a paper given me by the bank, but I didn't pay much attention to it. You got it here? Well, uh, no. Uh, but it might be with my things over the hotel. Good enough. You go over there and find it, and you can have the gold. And then again, it uh, might be I've lost it back in the trail somewhere. Oh, I see. You see, I threw away some things, and that paper might have been among them. That's too bad if it's so. Well, there's just a chance I might be able to find it again. I threw them things away while we made camp one night. The paper ain't at the hotel. Me and my deputy will ride back and have a look. Uh Uh-huh. We found it. That'd save us having to ride all the way back to White Rapids for another letter. Hey, come on, deputy. I'll wait here for a half hour or so, in case you do find it at the hotel. Thanks. Tex, what'd you tell him we had that paper for when you know we ain't? There's nothing else to do. If I hadn't, he might have got suspicious. But no, what'll we do? There's two things we can do. Yeah, what? We'll keep an eye on Clay's office. The gold is kept there overnight. Maybe we can steal it. Uh-huh. And if we can't, there's still another way. But we'll try this one first. Later that night, when Clay had locked the office and gone home, the two outlaws crept toward the building. They finally reached the window, and... Gold's still in there. I know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. Nobody keeping guard. Most likely don't expect no trouble. Yeah, how are we going to get inside? Door's locked. Uh-huh. But there ain't nothing to keep us from breaking this window is there. That's locked, too. We'll try it. It's locked, all right. Hand me a stone. Yes, won't that be heard? It ain't likely. Anyhow, we got to take some chances. Uh-huh. Here's what you want. Uh-huh. That'll do fine. Now stand by. I'm going to break the window with this. If anybody hears us, run for the horses and clear out. Yeah. Boy, the luck. It sounded like a stage driver. Come on, we got to run for it. We can't let him stop. Stand where you are. Let them go, Clay. They're crooks, just like you said, stranger. But now that we've got it on them, why let them go? We accomplished just what I wanted, Clay. What you wanted? Yes. We've shown them the gold is guarded and can't be stolen. Now they'll try another scheme to get it. Go back to the water hole again, Tex. If we don't, we'll never get that gold. I ain't giving up after we got this close. Maybe the sheriff and the deputy are dead already. Not a chance. They ain't fools enough to leave that water hole, not to go walk in the desert afoot. I reckon. And even if they're out of grub, they'll last a spell with water and drink. They did kick in, it don't matter. No? I never heard the sheriff say anything about stopping at the bank before he left for Littlefield. He said he was jailing us and starting right out. What if he did? You idiot. That means he must have had the letter from the bank already. He didn't give it to us because we didn't know enough to ask for it. He held it back just to trick us. Well, that's it. Uh-huh. But he ain't getting away with it. And we'll show him that when we find him. Get up there. Get along. Deserted by Texan Vern and without hope of rescue, Sheriff Sanders and his deputy had made the best of a bad situation. They had plenty of water, but their food, even though doled out sparingly, was soon exhausted. Hour by hour, they became weaker, and... Sheriff, I wonder if there's any worse way of dying than what we're doing. Quit talking about it. That don't help. I know, but I was just wondering if... It's food I'm thinking of. I suppose it helps to think of that. Of course it don't. But how are you going to stop it when you can feel your ribs nudging your backbone? Maybe we shouldn't have stayed here. What else could we do? What I mean is, maybe we should have started walking. Yeah? Without canteens? And traveling where even a horse has a hard time of it? If we'd have done that, we wouldn't be sitting here worrying about grub. We'd be where grub wouldn't do us no good, even if we had it. Then why in blazes can't somebody ride along this way? That's a foolish question. We wouldn't have come this way ourselves if I hadn't have been afraid maybe somebody would try to get them crooks away from us before we reached town. Sometimes I get to wishing so hard for somebody to come along, I, I begin to imagine I hear them. Like now. Yeah, so do... Hold on. That does sound like horsemen. But it can't be. Now listen. You're right. I can even make them out now. Gee. Huh? That, that looks like our horses. There they are. We figured we'd 
still find you fellows here. Oh, 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 oh. You come back to get us? No need to get your hopes up. You rock. It ain't you we come for. That letter you was holding back on us. And you might as well hand it over, Sheriff, without putting up a fuss. <laughs> right now, you don't look like you could put up much of a fight. What paper are you talking about? You know the one. The letter they gave you at the bank. Huh? The bank? Playing dumb, huh? Well, it won't get you nothing. Stand up. But wait. Stand up, I said. Oh, yeah, that's better. You got all my papers. We'll soon find out. Burn, keep your shooting iron aimed at these fellas while I search them. Right. I'll start on you, Sheriff. But you're local. The bank never give me no letter. What'd they do that for? Eh, nothing in these pockets. What would they do that for? So the manager of the stage line at Littlefield will turn over the gold to you. I don't savvy what you're talking about. Eh, Tain on them, Vern. I'll search the deputy. You won't. Shut up. Oh, that's a funny thing. Don't find it nowhere here. You suppose they've hit it somewhere? They might have. You fellas are talking crazy. You think so, Sheriff? Well, listen to this. I ain't never killed a man before. But there's a heap of gold waiting for me in Littlefield if I get back with that letter. Enough to make a killing worthwhile. So start telling what you've done with that letter and start talking fast. I can't tell you. I don't know anything about it. All right, then. That's the way you want it. Here's where you get it. Oh, my hand. Raise your hands, both of you. Uh, what? That same mask, fella. And a red ski. Drop your gun. Wait, look. Drop them. There's mine. You, Tex. There it is. But that mask, who it are you? It doesn't matter who I am, Sheriff. I'm taking you and your deputy back to town. We'll see that this time these crooks go to jail. Get on your horses. Yeah, bless you. Just our luck to have you come along. But it wasn't luck. Huh? When Sheriff Sanders said he knew nothing of a letter, he was telling the truth. There was no letter. What? The manager of the stage line only told you that to send you here and lead us to the sheriff. You, you tricked us. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. It almost makes me forget my appetite just thinking of how the mask fella fooled you. <laughs> here, get on my horse, Sheriff. Steady. Steady there, Silver. Yep, with you. Uh, Greg will ride with Tonto. Uh, me, me help him out. And you're helping us take these skunks in? Yep. Uh, yes, and right now. Ready, Tonto? Uh huh? Then come on. Hey, old Silver! Away! Just heard as a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.